So one is by pra praising him and singing to him. Another one is by praying to him. God loves us to come into his presence and pray to him. He taught his disciples, our father, our father, this is, this is phenomenal. And I was uh, um, mentioning the other night that Muslims have a rosary. It's, it's one of these beads, uh, a, a, a string of beads, and there are 99 beads. And each one of those beads, you've seen it on television where, where the, the mullahs are, are, are counting these beads. Because each bead has a name for God. 99 names. And they memorize them. There's one missing. You know what that one is, missing is? They can't say it. They can't call God Father. Because they say that God hasn't had a son hasn't had a son. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And yet we have the privilege of calling God our Father. Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And and, and so we should be grateful by praying to him. Um, the Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says this, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds um, as you live in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4 uh, verses 6 to 7. So, singing and praising Him, praying to Him, um, offering Him thanksgiving as a sacrifice. In Hebrews chapter 13, I, I must read this to you very briefly, <coughs> Hebrews chapter 13, it says this, verse 12, let me read it to you. And so Jesus suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips that confess his name. What, what, what does a sacrifice of praise mean? <coughs> God is pleased with a sacrifice of praise. Or simply, a sacrifice costs. A sacrifice of anything costs. When David wanted to um, offer us a, a, a sacrifice um, to the Lord um, one of the people offered him and said well look I'll, I'll give you the sacrifice David and you know what David said he said this shall I offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing it doesn't pain I don't lose I'm giving of my leftovers. But that's not what God wants. He wants to offer a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. I remember a China inland missionary called Leslie Lyle and his wife, Catherine Lyle, were fleeing the Japanese from China, going over the hump into Burma, and as they were going with their children, one of the children died on the trail. And I remember Mrs. Lyle relating this story and telling us that was the first time she understood what it was to offer a sacrifice of praise. She had to bury her child at the side of the trail and go on fleeing the Japanese. Shall I offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing? And... Um, David actually, he said this to Aruna, No, I insist on paying the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours, 
or sacrifice a burnt offering that costs me nothing? Shall I offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing? So that's the fourth uh, point. And, and, and another, another way that we can show that we love the Lord is by sharing our testimony about Him. And I hope during the period that we're here together, um, there'll be opportunity for people to share their testimony about how, God, how good God is. And uh, that there were, I'm sure there's going to be opportunity for that. St. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Um, he was proud of the fact that he was a child of God. He wasn't ashamed of it. He didn't keep it under cover when he went to work. He was always willing to be proud of the fact that he was one of God's children, one of God's ambassadors, and uh, he was always happy to share. And finally, and I, sh I finish with this tonight, how, how else, what shall I offer to the Lord? How can I say thank you, Lord? And by being obedient to him. By being obedient to him. God has got claims and rights on our lives. If we, if we have be, been redeemed, if we have been purchased through the, the death of Christ, the blood of Christ, shed in our place, taking the penalty that should be ours, that Jesus has taken that for us, and paid the, the penalty that because the Bible says the wages, that's what you earn. That's what, that's, that's what you deserve. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he's wanting to give us a gift and we need to accept it from him and be obedient to him. How can we be obedient to him? That's a long story and I'm not going into it tonight. I know a lot of you are agreeing with me now and, and uh, I won't go on any longer. And, and, uh, but just take away this, these evening meditations and think about them. What shall I offer to the Lord? Shall I offer to the Lord that which cost me nothing? How can I be obedient to the Lord? In, in the way I live, in the way I think, in my daily life with my family how can I be obedient to the Lord and especially in terms of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and I I'm spending a time on that on Romans 15 later on and um, I, I close by saying this ought we, ought we not isn't it time for us to make our own declaration of independence tonight now what do I mean by that what does a declaration of independence mean it means being freed from tyranny it means being freed from powers outside that would want to take control of us that was independence in 1776 that was a declaration of independence now I think tonight we should think of ourselves, think ourselves and say, well, should I be making a statement of independence, a declaration that I want to be delivered? I want to be delivered. That's what the people did in 1770. They wanted to be delivered. And I'm not talking about political deliverance, but I'm talking about spiritual deliverance. Deliverance from the world. And one John describes what the world is deliverance from the flesh two things we need deliverance from some of us here tonight need deliverance from that one the world that's on the outside the other the flesh that's all that's going on the tug of war in our own lives and I won't read Galatians chapter 5. You probably know all about it. And if we're not submitted to the Lord and invited the Lord to become Lord in our lives, then we're going to be having a, a battle with the world and the flesh. And finally, with the devil and all his deceitful schemes in our lives. 
Are you prepared to renounce the works of the world and of the flesh and of the devil and say, Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I want to make a statement, a declaration and renounce all of these outside powers and give myself to you tonight. And that would be a wonderful start um, for our time together that we offer ourselves to the Lord and pray to the Lord. And I'm going to pray now. And uh, if you want to pray after me, then please do. So let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your word. We can't thank you enough for all the wonders of what you've done for us. You chose us before the foundation of the world. We are precious in your sight to the extent that you sent your son to die for us. And we tonight we want to make our own declaration of independence against the world against the flesh and against the devil and we invite you to come into our lives to cleanse us Lord and to fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can live a life of liberty and freedom and joy and peace so we pray that your word will sink into our hearts tonight as we go to bed and that we give thanks to you for your greatness and your goodness in Jesus name Amen Thank you and all the time that uh, Muriel and I are here, uh, not when we're standing up on the platform, but other times, if you want to have a personal chat with us, that's what we're here for. Thank you. I'm just skip. I'm gonna skip the hymn number uh, 176, and we'll go right into our prayer uh, together. Because we all sitting here, we have come from different uh, countries, but the uh, America becomes our uh, our second home. So at this time, we're gonna pray together for this country. It's just like our country too. Look at the prayer on page uh, 16. We got to read that prayer together and ask God to bless this country, America, our second home. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly to you your will. Bless our land with honest industry, sound learning, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Make us who from many nations, with many different languages, as united people. Defend our liberty and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom that there might be justice and peace in our land. When times are prospered, let us our heart be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fall. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and sing hymn number 690, America the Beautiful.
ยสนุกจากเครื่องวิญญาณบริสุทธิ์ในโซเชียลอยู่กระทั่งทั้งหลายวันนี้และสืบสืบไปเป็นอีกอเมน Thank you.